Bueno, seguimos en el Centro Espacial Kennedy. Esta vez tengo la oportunidad de hablar con Christine Ramos. Christine eh, no habla español, pero trabaja en Boeing. Es la líder de desarrollo de negocios eh, para SLS. How are you, Christine? Good. Thank you for your time. Anytime. Why don't you tell us exactly your role and what is? Because I know that you've been mostly you have an extended career in, in aerospace yeah. from ULA to Boeing to uh, NASA. So uh, tell us exactly what you're doing now uh, and, and how exciting you are right now because of, of this magnificent day. Absolutely. So I'm um, currently I work in business development. I really understand the capabilities of this rocket for SLS. And so I try to structure all those capabilities for future and new exciting missions uh, for deep space exploration. So how long have you been involved exactly in this position? Oh. We're talking months, we're talking years. <laughs> Months. Um, I've been an engineer prior, so um, I've been on, in this position for about six months. Yeah. Six months. Yeah. What is it that you're ex more excited? Uh, what is it that excites, excites you the most about this day? This day. So Can you believe we we reached I this? Am, I can't actually. It feels so <laughs> surreal. So my previous position, you know, I was a design engineer um, when SLS was just on paper. You know, it was just on the screen. We're talking 2010, 12, uh, 12, 2012 when 12. I started. Yeah. And then um, right when we were starting to manufacture, I actually traveled to Mishu down in New Orleans. I was actually in there crawling inside the engine section when it was completely empty. And then I followed it um, to Stennis in Mississippi and actually um, was there full time for the Green Run campaign and then followed it back home here to Florida. So for me, it's very surreal because I've been on this program for so long. I've seen it when it's paper, then piece parts, and then Big From an napkin, a napkin to to yeah, to fully stacked on the crawler here, so it's amazing. So so we we could say it's, it's almost your baby. It is my baby. <laughs> I, I will admit that this is my child. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I cannot imagine the the excitement. I mean, after. 12 years, 10, 12 years, building something from from scratch, from a napkin, a napkin to see rolling out of, of that building. How important is Artemis, Artemis for, for NASA? Uh, yeah. How, how no, I mean, emotionally, uh, in a lot of factors, I mean, like, I think it's uh, Artemis is going to be, uh, change the way we see and we go back to the moon. So this is going to change everything just because it's the first step. It's really the first step of deep space exploration. You know, and in this generation, we haven't gone back to the moon. I mean, the last time we were there was 50 years ago. So for us to be making that trek back, it's going to inspire a lot for science and engineering. Um, not just in engineering, though, but all creative aspects. Because, you know, it doesn't just take engineering to build this rocket. It takes logistics and yeah. schedulers and analysis, technicians, all kinds of people, all kinds of, you know, of work skills and I hope that this inspires them really to go and look into space in, in the aerospace industry so this is just a fantastic day when they see that and then when it launches I hope it inspires them even more what are your next steps you personally uh, are you working already in Artemis 1 2 and 3 or the involvement of I know that we are already building yes part of the part of the of the SLS 2 and SLS T for, yes. for those missions are you completely involved in those uh, yeah so we're looking into future missions beyond right what what can we do for deep space exploration so when we start building exploration upper stage we're going to be looking into going further and beyond so further to Mars or maybe interstellar space you know we're really working with like the science community you know with our, our customer and really trying to you know materialize all those missions so every day we're always looking at capability what can we do and and what can we who can we involve in in these missions <laughs> you always been this passionate about space I have been I used to work shuttle and at shuttle you know I didn't think I could work in in aerospace you know I came as a chemical engineer thinking that I had to only go into petroleum or maybe medical um, coming here and witnessing how inspirational everyone how smart and passionate it has gotten me passionate because it doesn't matter like what you do you know if you're involved in it, it's a very small niche not everybody can do it and doing the impossible is really fun you know <laughs> so um, for me yeah I'm very passionate about it especially it, witnessing everybody else who, who's passionate. you know I've, I've been interviewed a lot of people from NASA and other companies in the aerospace industry it's it's surprising the amount of uh, how many tell me that they never believed they could be working on their space yeah. because they, they thought they would be a rocket scientist. What would be your message 
to younger generations that, I mean, maybe they're not a rocket scientist, but they can actually work on this peace program. You don't have to be in science. Don't get me wrong, I advocate for, you know, uh -huh. for STEM. But if you are creative, if you want to work in the aerospace industry, there is a niche for everyone. We need finance people, we need lawyers, we need people in medical and agriculture. Communicators? Yeah, communicators especially. They need to get the word out because I think we need to do better in getting the word out about space. So honestly, every niche can come out here. Every background can, and we need them. You know, it doesn't just take an engineer to build it. We need schedulers. We need IT. Uh, people who can buy stuff. I don't know how to procure or use a credit card when it comes to buying this kind of stuff. So, um, so those that are interested in space but feel discouraged, you know, take a leap of faith. That's what I tell them. You never know. And if you're open, you're very open to trying something new and different and learning. Yeah, this is this is the place to be. Christine, where are you from? I'm actually down from South Florida. I'm first generation Filipino. So my family actually came over from the Philippines. Um, and for them, you know, they never thought that someone was going to be in aerospace. Are they know? proud? Of, uh, how proud are you? Uh, I mean. <laughs> They're actually really proud of me. You know, they, they take it back that, you know, that I'm working on a NASA program. Um, and they still don't, you know, they still don't understand. But to them, you know, they never thought that it could be possible. You, you know, they always thought you had to be um, a super, super, super rocket scientist. You know, you had to come from a certain school. You had to have, be a certain someone. Um, but it's, it's for anyone, anyone who's interested. Christine, thank you so much. Thank you. Very inspirational. Uh, <laughs> I, I admire you have a you have a dream job. Yes. Uh, yeah, working so many years, job. shuttle. <laughs> I mean, different companies, and now I mean, basically building SLS. Yes. So congratulations, thank and I you. hope it's uh, the rollout is extremely successful. Oh, it will be, and I hope you get to see it. Thank you. Thank so you so much. much. Gracias, Christine. Un ejemplo, la verdad. Eh, me encantó entrevistarla y, y nos seguimos en el Centro Espacial Kennedy.